over the unit one lab for chemistry with you, freezing point depression, and kind of give you an idea of what's expected in terms of answers and where you can find them. Um, first, you do have a pre-lab to do, okay? The pre-lab is three questions. The um, first one asks you to draw a cooling graph of water and have the y-axis be the temperature in degrees Celsius and the x-axis be time. Once you have made your graph, you are going to answer um, these two questions. One says, describe the shape of the graph. Why is the graph shaped this way? And then if the solution were to change its composition during freezing, how do you think the graph would change? Okay, so that's your pre-lab. Your lab is right here. And what I want to encourage you to do is actually read through the introduction. The introduction has a lot of information and sometimes has the answers or at least can help you answer the questions in the lab. So be mindful of just taking a few minutes and reading through the introduction before you breeze by it. One important thing in the introduction for today is this equation 6.1. Um, this is the freezing point depression equation that you're going to need for the last question in your lab. So know that it's here. The TF is the freezing point depression temperature. The KF is a freezing point depression constant. And that constant is given to you right here at the bottom, negative 1.86 degrees Celsius per mole. Okay, And then M is the molarity which um, actually tells you what molarity is right here. It says M is the molarity or the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent in a solution, okay? So hopefully you'll read through this, you'll look at the pictures, you'll grab some data, and right here for your questions, the very first thing you'll need to do is fill in the chart, okay? Find the average freezing points and the change in the freezing point temperature right here, okay? Question number one says, was there supercooling? Uh, this question right here actually has three questions in it, so you should have more than a one sentence answer, okay? Was there supercooling? Would you expect the water or sugar solution to have the most supercooling? And then say why, and it refers you to the introduction. Again, a lot of information in the introduction that can help you answer the question successfully. Question number two tells you that the mass of one mole of sugar is 342 grams. You used 19 grams. How many moles did you use? So let me um, kind of give you a better idea of what you would do here. Okay, so for this one, um, it basically, what you have is 342 grams in one mole of sugar. So if there's 342 grams in one mole of sugar, but you have 19 grams, how many moles of sugar is that? So you would set up your equation to look something like this. Um, you could say 342 grams is one mole, 19 grams is x moles, okay? And you would solve for x in this scenario. You would just cross multiply, okay? Um, question three says, you dissolve the 19 grams of sugar in 50 milliliters or 0 0.05 kilograms of distilled water. Calculate the molarity. So this is how you would do it. The molarity would be the moles of sugar, and you're going to get that from question number two, divided by the kilograms of water. And you would get that from the question, okay? So it's right here. Finally, number four says, from the molality... It's 1.30. Excuse my computer. From the molality, what should the freezing point be, okay? Um, so the freezing point TF is what you're solving for. Remember, KF was given to you in the introduction. You'll have to go back to the introduction and look 
for KF, and then the M you solve for, that's a molality, you solve for that in question number three, so you're going to put your answer for question number three in for M here, okay? I hope that helps you do some good math in this lab and give some quality answers.